Okay, so on the previous video, we solved the Lewis dot structure for uh, our first two compounds here. And so if you haven't looked at that video, I would strongly encourage you to look at that one to make sure you know how to solve the Lewis dot structure for these two. But now we're going to solve the Lewis dot structure for a polyatomic ion. Do you recognize this polyatomic ion? I sure do. It's one of my favorite. Oh, really? What's it called? It's called the... Well, I can't actually remember. Let me look at my list. The bicarbonate ion. That's right, bicarbonate ion. Very good. So how do we draw the Lewis dot structure for a bicarbonate ion? Well, we start off the same way, central atom, and that's about all. That's the same. Because after that, we have to recognize something. We have to recognize that this is the polyatomic ion of an oxyacid. Or, in other words, when hydrogens are on polyatomic ions, they're interacting through the oxygens. That's why we call them oxoacids. And so the oxygens are going to be around the central atom. But the hydrogen is going to be coming off of one of the oxygens, or all hydrogens in polyatomic ions are going to be coming off of the oxygens. All right? And then when we count up our valence electrons, because that's the next step, Carbon brought four, oxygen brought six times three, which is 18, right? Plus the four for oxygen, all right? And then uh, hydrogen brought one. We also have to add one extra electron for that negative charge. So whenever there's a charge, whatever it is, negative two, you add two, negative three, you add three. You add that many electrons, valence electrons to your party. So we got 22, 23, 24 electrons. 24 valence electrons on this compound. We start off, let's see, one, two there. All right, we've got to fill this in. And I would suggest you push pause right now and try to, to, to finish up, get as far as you can, and then you uh, follow along. 24 valence electrons, I push two there. So, oh, and also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have 10 that I've used up all together. So I have 14 valence electrons left. What's next? Uh, put some around the top oxygen. Well, both those oxygens. Or all three, for that matter. All right. How many should I put up here? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like that? Yep. So I've used twelve valence electrons. I only have two valence electrons left. Oh, only two? Uh, well, put them on that other oxygen that's missing them. All right. How many more electrons do I need here? Uh... It needs eight, so it has six right now. It needs two more. Yeah, it has one, two, three, four, five, six available to it, and it needs two more. Good. Um, what am I going to do? I think I would take them off of a different oxygen. Uh, let, let's, try, let's try removing these and putting them over here. Now I'm stuck with this problem. What's the problem over here? More electron density, but you can bring that carbon and make a double bond. The carbon electrons? Yeah. Very good. So if I bring these in like that, that's going to make a double bond between the carbon and this oxygen. One, two, three, four. Oxygen, one, two, three, four, with the hydrogen there. And then oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. How's that compound look? Is that right? Are we done? I don't think we're quite done. The formal charges aren't perfect. Okay. Everybody at home, make sure you found your formal charges. Fred's going to teach us what's wrong with the molecule. You don't have to get snooty. I just noticed something. All right. What's wrong? Well, the top oxygen. This one here? Yeah, it has a negative one formal charge. All right. Any other problems? No, I think everything else is okay. Each oxygen, other oxygen has zero, and the carbon has zero. Hydrogen. What do we do with hydrogen for that? Well, how many electrons did it bring? One. Minus, how many does it have right around it? One. Okay, so that's zero. Yeah, so everything's fine except for that oxygen. All right, so what can we do to fix that oxygen? Bring the electrons down to the carbon, two electrons down. All right. So you're suggesting that I uh, bring down electrons here and form a bond? Yeah. Okay, so if I do that...
All right. Does that look better? I think so. Uh, there's something wrong there, Fred. Oh, really? What is it? Well, keep looking. See. If oh, carbon can't have. What? What? Let me just look at the periodic table. What you looking for? I want to know what row carbon is in. Yeah, it's only in the second, so it can't have more than eight electrons around it. That's right. It can't have more than eight electrons available to it. it can't have an expanded octet because it's in a um, uh, in the second row. It's not in the third row. Also, it has a formal charge here, right? Even if it could have an expanded octet, the formal charge here would be a negative one. But let's go back to this. So what we are seeing though then is if we move our electron down. For carbon, we can't do that at all. But for an other atom, we might be able to do that. But the problem, it, the problem is it would create an expanded octet, right? And carbon can't have an expanded octet. Um, but the oxygen here has that negative one charge, the negative one formal charge. And that's okay for this compound because this is a polyatomic ion with a charge, right? Okay. So because we have a negative one charge, we expect there to be negative one formal charge somewhere on this compound. And so this is the right, this is the right chemical structure. Carbon double bound to one oxygen, singly bound to another with a negative charge on it, and then our hydrogen coming off there. And if we were to bring in another H plus ion, we would see where it, that positively charged ion would want to go, right? It would then bond to, two of those electrons would go into forming a bond. Right? So, and we know that the carbonate ion is the uh, uh, weak acid of a polyatomic ion, or sorry, it's the, it's, it's the ion of a weak acid. So if it interacts with hydrogen ions in water, it's going to pull them off, right? Okay, very good. So that's how you approach a polyatomic ion. So try this one at home. Draw the Lewis dot structure for Lewis dot structure for xenon hexafluoride, and we want how many bonding pairs are there? All right, bonding pairs. Now we have what are called non-bonding. We have uh, bonding. Right, we have lone pairs. That's another name for non-bonding. So this one is asking for bonding pairs. Okay, solve it at home. Frank or Fred, what do you think? You always call me Frank. I know, I know. Sorry about that. The answer is A. You sure? Well, it has to be, right? Because xenon is a central atom and then there's six fluorines around. Okay, very good. Straightforward, right? Xenon. I guess the only thing that we weren't sure of is there's double bonds or not, right? But you finished it already and found out that there's not? Yeah, there's no double bonds. Very good. So fluorine brought seven times six, that's 42. Yep, and then plus the eight, so that's 50. All right, so there's 50 valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, minus 12, so we have 38. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, six. Uh, so what do I do now? Well, six electrons for each fluorine. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, times one, two, three, four, that's 36? Yeah, and then the other two you just put on the xenon. Okay, so if this question had asked how many non-bonding electrons are around the xenon, that would be a fair question, too. All right, very good. Excellent. How about formal charges? Can you calculate the formal charges on each of these atoms? How about that oxygen there, Fred? Oh, that oxygen? That has a uh, brought six, one, two, three, minus one. Very good. How about this oxygen here? Uh, no formal charge. How about this carbon? Zero. How about this oxygen? That has a, a plus one, because it has six, brought six, and it has only five. Very good. How about this nitrogen? What's its formal charge? Uh, brought... Five, uh, one, two, plus one. Very good. Plus one formal charge. Excellent job. What's the formal charge on the sulfur in this HSO3 minus ion? HSO3 minus. OK, 
Okay, work on this by yourself. Tell us what to do, Fred. Sulfur is the central atom. And then you bind the oxygens. There's three oxygens. And then you put the hydrogen off of the sulfur as well. Hydrogen here? Yeah. Wait, isn't this a, a polyatomic ion? Oh, yeah. So the hydrogen comes off of one of the oxygens? That's right. Very good. Okay, so I got to go back and rethink it. All right, so if you had it the other way, go back and finish this up now. All right, how many electrons are there? Uh, six times four, 24, plus the hydrogen, that's 25. So 25 electrons, that was six. Each one of these is in the six column, times four, 24 plus the one. Is that it? Oh, the negative charge, I need one more electron. Very good, plus one for the negative, 26 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons here. So we have uh, 12, elect no, 18 electrons left. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then maybe two on the sulfur. Does that look okay? Well, that's a start. Um, but I think that you have so many formal charges. That's right. We do have lots of formal charges. So I used up my electrons. No formal charge there, is that true? That's right. Uh, sulfur, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. It has a, a, a minus one so formal charge, huh? No, plus one. Oh, yeah, plus one. Six, one, two, three, four, five. So sulfur has a plus one. These oxygens? They have a minus one. Very good. Excellent. So um, the result here is uh, something that's not quite there, but close. How can we stabilize it? Well, you've got to bring electron density in from one of the oxygens to the sulfur. That's true. We have to bring electron density in, move electron density from the negative down to the positive. And once we do that, we're going to have sulfur with a double bond to this oxygen. Extra electrons there. Oxygen, right? And then oxygen and a hydrogen. Very good. Now, no formal charge on this oxygen or this sulfur, just a formal charge there. But that's okay because we have a negative charge in the atom, or in the molecule. Very good, very good. So there's our finished structure, and what is the question? The formal charge on the sulfur, it's gonna be zero. All right, very good, it's gonna be zero. Now, this is a scenario also where I could kind of think of drawing an equivalent structure where the sulfur can move, or these electrons here could move in to be there, right? Because sulfur can have a further expanded octet, right? Is that okay? Well, it's okay, but now sulfur has the negative one charge. Very good. So now sulfur has the negative one formal charge. What's better? Is it better for sulfur to have the negative one formal charge or is it better for oxygen? Uh, I think it's better for oxygen because we said that the hydrogens were going to bind there. Okay, that's true. That's true. This is like a uh, uh, conjugate, or sorry, um, it is a polyatomic ion that is going to bind a hydrogen right here, right? If it's going to interact with water. Um, but it's also better to have that negative charge on the more electronegative atom. So here it's on the sulfur, but sulfur doesn't want that electron density as much as oxygen does because oxygen is the more electronegative atom. So whenever there's a choice between where to put a, a formal charge, it will want to reside on the more electronegative atom. Okay, good work.